Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, I'm excited to have Pep Laya, who's one of the top marketing conversion experts. He's the founder of a conversion optimization agency, Marketect, and the bottom line is they make websites sell better. I learned a lot from your videos. One thing is, the biggest thing is you need to have a clear value proposition, and he's gonna talk about that. He's also one of the world's, he has the world's most popular conversion optimization blog, conversionxl.com, check it out. That gets over 140,000 visitors per month, and he has a conversion conference to check out at live.conversionxl.com. Pep, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for having me. I want to start off with, I like to start off with a fun fact, but before that, actually, I'm always curious, can you point out some specific things that you changed on your website? Because you're very data-driven and you look at a lot of the research, so I'm really curious if you can point out some of the elements you subtracted or added because of the data that you found. Yeah. Um my main business goal for my blog besides building the brand and so on is to capture emails yeah, yeah. so I'm always testing how to get more emails yeah. uh, if I uh, and I tested pop-up versus scroll trigger box versus static <clears throat> uh, lead capture boxes mm -hmm. out of those no contest scroll triggered boxes those that appear as you scroll down hmm. perform the best really and I ran a follow-up test. What well, if I had all three at the same time? Right. Guess what? They don't cannibalize. They add. Really? So, yeah, I have I have uh, more ways to capture emails in my blog than some people would like. Every now and then somebody complains. But, I mean, pop-up and scroll trigger box combined at 30%. So, I mean, wow. it's a no-brainer. What about a Marketect? A Marketect page? Yeah, with Marketect, um, I guess the biggest insight has been that we we uh, have a video there about our company. Yeah. And every time somebody hits the play, we record an event in Google Analytics, and we found that people who watch the video convert better. So we ran a test. It's still running actually, uh, where the video is bigger. Yeah, and, I was going to ask uh, about that. Yeah, the pi the picture is bigger. You mean? Um, no, actually, uh, right now we're running a, a, a test where the video um, thumbnail is uh, is bigger on, on some variations. And yeah. So far, it's performing about 30% better, but the sample size is too small, so mm -hmm. early to tell. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask because it's a very small, at least when I went to it, I was the test group that's a small thumbnail. I was yeah. wondering why you don't, you know, the size of that, why you made it that size. Well, I mean, if you start with a, this website has been uh, live for a couple of months. When yeah. you start, we start with your best hypothesis. You, know? mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to work. So we decided to go with more text because most people don't watch videos. Mm, I see. Uh, Makes sense. But those who do are typically the more interested people. So more leads come mm -hmm. comes in. You mm -hmm. know? So what other data-driven decisions you made with Conversion Excel that have been... Uh Produce great mm. results for you. So, for instance, my homepage, Conversion Excel, which looks like crap, um, but uh, you know it's getting a new design next month. But the homepage, it used to also have blog posts. It used to have navigation, but I removed all of them because having none of that stuff works better. So now I just have an offer, opt-in, well, and a link at the bottom if you want to just go to the blog, but. Mm -hmm. So yeah, getting rid of noise and just focusing in on a single offer kicks ass. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it does. So I always like to include the fun fact that most people don't know because you do a lot of blogging, video interviews, and back in high school, you used to sing in a metal rap band. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah, you... I, I was not the main singer. I was like the the number two singer. You look yeah. kind of you look the part tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I also want to find out a little bit about you, your background. Um, where'd you grow up? Uh, what was a big influence for you growing up? Yeah, uh, growing up, uh, I grew up in Estonia, my home country. Mm -hmm. And then I started to travel the world um, during the college years. 
So I lived in Dubai where I met a girl and uh, moved to Panama with her and then we lived in Thailand and now, now I'm in Austin, Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, I did not become an entrepreneur by choice. It was kind of an accident. So I did not have any entrepreneurial role models growing up. I always thought I'll just have a job um, until I moved to Panama and my employer uh, was a startup and their main investor pulled out all the money and then I was in Panama and I was like holy crap what am I going to do now right. uh, am I going to go home and try to make it and then had to had to somehow make it and I started a local SEO PPC agency there and so what were you doing in accident. Panama for them Oh, I just went there to have fun and to learn Spanish. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was dating this girl uh, who I'm married to now, so it was just it was just fun, you know, mainly. Uh, and I worked for uh, initially for a British internet television company. Uh, the investor was the wife of sorry, the uh, the husband of Anita Roddick, the founder of Body Shop, and she died of cancer, so oh, wow. the husband got depressed, pulled out the investments, and Jeez. then I was. There was in Panama, and then since I had been doing PPC SEO in Dubai, where I uh, previously lived, I went to local, um, say, tourism and real estate companies and say, hey, hire me. And they all said, we do need what you offer, but not full time. And then I just registered the domain name, panamainternmarketing.com, put up a website and said, hey, I'm a company, even though not, not legally. But I said, hey, yeah. And so I landed my first clients. The same people that interviewed me. Was it a hard sell to, to get your first clients, or did you just no, call no, them up? No, it was up? so easy. I mean, back in the day, that was 2007. Yeah, it was so easy. Like I I kind of sent cold emails to companies that I thought would be you know interested in SEO, mm-hmm. like Air Panama, the national airline. Uh, and the CEO himself replied to my email, my wow. cold email, saying that we have been waiting for somebody. Can you come in? You know, so landed them as a client, and they're they're still using parts of the website that I built for them uh, even now. So it must have been a damn good cold email. What'd you say? <laughs> I don't remember, <laughs> but uh, I think it was. It's probably not not uh, totally bad, but I think it wasn't really good. It was just that nobody else was offering SEO in Panama back in two thousand and seven. Yeah, yeah. So what was next after uh, the SEO? PPC? Uh, so. Once I got done with Panama and um, then I started to just hop around in places, um, mm-hmm. just US, Europe, Central America, just backpacking and, and you know, if you have a really, if you have a lifestyle where you move around a lot, you need to have a digital product. So I got into info products, mm-hmm. selling ebooks, courses, stuff like that. Um, and that's where I got more into the conversion stuff as well. Um, and, you know, of course, o- already with the SEO, you know, even if I managed to get my clients to number one in Google, which, again, in 2007 wasn't very hard, uh, I saw that they weren't necessarily making more money. You know, there's more to this intern marketing thing than just SEO, mm-hmm. I realized. Mm-hmm. And w- with my uh, with my info products, I you know, started to run my first tests using the now uh, ex- extinct Google Website Optimizer, and uh, and I, I I ran a blog in Estonian language. It was the, at a time the most popular marketing blog in the country. But Estonia is a very small country, so you know once they moved to the United States, I think in 2010 legally, um, then you know I was like, well, how how do I conquer this market here? Mm-hmm. And uh, decided to like hey I'm kind of into this conversion stuff so why don't I start a blog actually I had a failed startup as well forgot about that so yeah I'm not going to let you forget about it I know train <laughs> well uh, train them I wanted yeah. to hear what happened with train them yeah so yeah. we built this kick ass software cuz you know I was selling courses and ebooks yeah. and my clients were asking me hey I want to sell an online course too how and I said oh let me google it for you uh, uh, and found nothing. No tool out there was in, in 2009 that you could use to build online courses. Mm-hmm. So, cut together a team. We built a tool. It was kick-ass. And then hard marketing lessons. You might have the best tool in the world, but if you have no money, 
no name recognition, no relationships, nothing, then how do you get the word out that, hey, you have this cool product? So mm -hmm. we tried for two years all kinds of things from from blogging to building relationships to with influencers to spamming and uh, just nothing worked fast enough for us. Um, so we had to fold our cards. And actually, even now, you know, I released a conversion course earlier this year and I wanted to just train them because no, no, nothing else out there was as good. They all right. suck. Yeah. I was like, oh, actually, there could have been, you know, a future for it. Just didn't have a market. So once train them failed, and I was now thinking, like, what what to do now? Hmm. And I th thought about getting into the conversion game. I told myself, I'm not gonna make the same mistake. I'm gonna build hmm. an audience first. Okay. So that's when Conversion XL the blog happened. And why do you um, think? Well, I'm gonna talk about Conversion XL, but why do you think trained them didn't work? Because you obviously had a need. Why do you yeah. think it, it didn't work? And now you can go back to it. You know, if I don't know to be honest, uh, I have just some theories. Because um, we, you know, technical uh, implementation-wise, if people wanted it to run on their own domain name, you know, it was kind of difficult to go to your domain name registry and mm -hmm. add a C name, you know, value there. Hard. Also, most people had their existing sites. We required them to sign up. Or a new like a subdomain xxx so It's kind of like Udemy, right? I mean, Udemy does that. Uh, the difference with Udemy was that Udemy also provided a marketplace where you could shop for courses. Mm -hmm. We only sold to course creators, mm -hmm. and and that's a, a good point that that we probably should have done a marketplace model as well, because the people who did sign up with us had a really hard time selling their courses because mm -hmm. they they were not often marketers themselves. They were like. How to grow plants yeah. or you know whatever. So we had, of course, uh, you know, clients who, who were making a good amount of money and were very happy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we should have done a marketplace model like Udemy because Udemy pretty much started at the same time as did Kajabi. And what Kajabi did differently, they hired, uh, they partnered with uh, a guy with a huge reach, huge network. Mm -hmm. um, so we One tried to thing, do it on, on I wanted to find out about Traindom, which I think is interesting, is how do you decide when to, to quit? You know, like a year, two years, three yeah. years? Because a lot of people are at something for seven years and then right. it's successful. So how do you, how do you balance that? Well, we, we didn't, we tried, we ran out of ideas to try mm -hmm. and there was no, it wasn't making money. We had to do stuff on the side to yeah. keep the lights on. Uh, and two years in, we were kind of demoralized, and the developers that I was working with, they were, since I was responsible for the marketing part, they were kind of like pissed, they were pissed at me, because like, you know, we built a software, so now you do your part. And, right. You know, so interpersonal relationships, mm -hmm. um, and what, it was, it was really hard to take the decision, because it was like my baby. You know, really hard, yeah. Years That's why I asked. And I was poor, as you know, didn't have any money, and so one, one, uh, finally, we took the decision to let it go. It was like, oh man, should have done it a year ago. Such, it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, stop beating the dead horse because we didn't really see any upward trend. It was like flat. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like the, the growth. Uh, it was like every every month people were signing up, but not at an acceptable rate. Mm -hmm. Was next conversion XL then? Yeah. So how do uh, you? The other thing is the mental aspect of this didn't work. Some people would go get a job. Yeah. You know what made you? I'm gonna try this again. You know. You know. So throughout this time, when I was doing uh, trained them and and before I was making money as a consultant. Uh, like a digital marketing consultant, how to do your SEO and PPC stuff and mm -hmm. so on. Um, so I had a, a small consulting geek going. Uh, so venturing into, you know, offering a conversion service was was not something really new or uh, or sudden. It was like just everything was leading up to it. Yeah, yeah. So no. 
getting a job was not an option because I lead a multi-country life. I yeah. spend all my summers in Estonia, yeah. the rest of them in Austin, Texas, and then you know travel. Like last uh, 2012, I lived in Thailand. Uh, so, so you know, who's going to hire you so you can right. travel around the world? You know, right. Nobody. So that ship has sailed. Yeah, you got a taste of uh, of one, of vacationing, wandering around, and white work. Right, and you were right, going back. right. And it, it, you know, now that I you know have a higher profile than I used to, I get you know quite a lot of job offers. But then what I always tell them is, is like, you should hire my agency for twelve months. It's much cheaper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what was next? How'd you grow Conversion XL? So Conversion XL. So since I was gung ho committed to growing an audience first before I offer a product, right. I did heavy research about how to build an audience fast. Yeah. What kind of content spreads? What kind of content yeah. people like to read? Yeah. And also, since I picked conversion optimization, because A, I was interested in it, and B, uh, now a defunct Google AdWords tool show me that there's not that much competition as, you know, um, and the Google Trends show me an upward trend, which is still there. Mm -hmm. And when I Googled any, anything conversion related, there was very little content. Yeah. You know, very few players in the market. So I saw this room. So um, I, th I, I thought of everything that somebody might want to know about conversion optimization. And I, of course, Googled what already exists. And I saw there's a whole lot of crap out there. Mm -hmm. And the data told me that posts that do well in social media are long posts and also if for backlinks long thoroughbouts yeah. lots of examples images well formatted bullet points yeah. subheadings the whole yeah, you speech. have a fantastic post on this what what is the so people can check it out what's it called it's conversion uh, excel and um, it just basically breaks down or maybe it's on Noah's yeah, site yeah I, I wrote it for uh, okay my friend uh, Noah Kagan's blog yeah. okay dork yeah so really okay good dork. Post. if you google okay dork conversion excel um, it's fantastic. you'll find it. yeah yeah, people should check that out for sure. What was early on a big impact? You talk about it was one of your posts about micro copy. What are the small things that make huge impact? What were those small things that made huge impact so far for conversion XL? You know, I, I can't really attribute anything to micro copy because uh, you know, in the beginning, I was just working on getting the the content machine going because. Mm -hmm. um, it's just hard work. It's no small change. I mean, I, uh, you know, 12 to 16 hours writing a blog post. Uh, and then I wrote those blog posts for a specific audience and so on. Yeah. So, so tweaking these small little things like yeah. microcopy Later becomes on. a useful tool once you have a significant amount of traffic. Because if yeah. you have, don't have much traffic, you shouldn't tinker with the small stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? So what's your process for research? Because obviously you do tons of research for your clients, and then on these mm -hmm. blog posts, there yeah. could be three thousand words. Right. So a new client comes in, say, "Help me boost my conversions." Yeah. It will be easy to say, "Yeah, of course I know what to do to improve your conversions," right. but the truth is that I don't. Nobody knows. Because if me or actually some people out there claim to know what what you know one has to do to improve conversions, they're all full of shit. Because if they knew. They and all their clients would be all billionaires, you know. Nobody knows. Of course, some low-hanging fruits you can pick here and there, but mm -hmm. generally speaking, you are not the tar target audience. You know, just yesterday I was consulting somebody that uh, uh, created uh, a sells chassis systems for hunting rifles. Hmm. Like, I, I'm never even ho ho held a gun in my hand. I don't know anything about that. A target audience or right. the product, yeah. but it's not about that. It's about a yeah. process to find out where the the holes are. So the yeah, so the what process you do? To, the research process, essentially, I mean, there is no one true process out there, right? Because you could do, you could on one hand measure five thousand metrics across five hundred segments and have your in-house user research lab. That costs a billion dollars a year, mm -hmm. or you can do nothing. So uh, everything in between. So you choose how much research yeah. you want to do and how much it's gonna cost. So 
the method that I use with branded it as conversion Excel, uh, sorry, research Excel, and and we have a we gather six points of input, six points of data to make our uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. We always start with heuristic analysis. Heuristic analysis is essentially an experience-based assessment of a website. So we walk through the site page by page, like home page, cart, product, category, you know, whatever you have. Mm -hmm. And, and we assess each page for clarity, distraction, anxiety, um, you know, stuff like that. So very specific analysis. Mm -hmm. um, and that results in, well, for some people, it results just, uh, as the truth. But we call it areas of interest. If we see something wrong with a page, we don't know that that isn't actually a problem. So now, based on what we find, we want to seek validation to these ideas. Uh, and we look at qualitative as well as quantitative data. So uh, quantitative is essentially web analytics, Google Analytics, right. uh, heat maps, you know, quantifiable data. So in Google Analytics, we want to understand where is the money leaking out? W people come to the site, where are they dropping out? Which spe specific pages are causing people to drop out? Mm -hmm. And the quality part, talking to people, this is customer service, serving website traffic, interviews with buyers, interviews with customer support, sales staff. That tells us, helps us to understand, the customer helps us understand the why yeah. behind. Yeah. So for instance, there was a client that sells pool parts online. And analytics data tells us that the product pages are crap. The, the visit to the product page to add to cart ratio is really poor. Mm. Why? Analytics doesn't tell us that. But qualitative surveys told us that the main source of friction was for people, I'm not sure if this is the right part for my pool. I see, I see. Right. And we are, now we understand what's the problem. Now we can tackle it. So it always should be qualitative, quantitative together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, you saw that was confusing for someone and you knew that's immediately going to be an issue. Yeah, exactly right. So what were some successful website conversions? If you look at some of the past clients' sites, what did you discover that worked really well? Mm. So it, depend, it depends a lot on the, mm -hmm. the type of business. Yeah. So if you sell software, if you sell software, SaaS, whatever, mm -hmm. screenshots, lots and lots of screenshots show the product. The same goes, of course, for physical products. If you sell pants, or shoes, or hats. The number thing, one thing that people care about is what it looks like, not the size or the fabric or whatever. Mm. Do I like the design of the hat? If yes, now I care about the fabric and mm -hmm. if it's fair trade and whatnot, right? Right, right. Um, so pictures, pictures really, really helps. Mm -hmm. um, uh, other, another thing that really helps is just focus. So on product page, e-commerce product pages, you know, everything that is there, is it helping me to make the decision to add the product to cart or not? If it's not motivation, might be friction. So removing stuff, removing sidebars, removing whatever upsell offers even can help. So focus, bigger pictures, good solid things that I always want to try. What one sticks out to you out of the ones on your page? You have uh, on the Marketect uh, page, you have Advantage Consulting, Bikini Body Works, Belkin Trails, Shipwire. Which one sticks out to you that you just had that aha moment that this needed to be changed or they needed to add or subtract this? What, what one sticks out? Mm, uh, so let's see. Mm hmm. <laughs> Because so it is, obviously uh, it's a beautiful design, like when you look at it. But I'm wondering, it didn't look like that before you got started with it. You know? Uh, yeah. You know. I mean, there are so many cases. So, for instance, uh, one of our customers, Nationalogy. Yeah. Uh, E-commerce site. Yeah. So for them, the data was telling us that so they sell allergy relief products, mm -hmm. and our customer service. Uh, showed us that when well, people are looking at a product, whether to buy it or not, their question in their mind is, is this product going to help my specific allergy, help me with this, you know, 
uh, re get relief from this whatever algae. Yeah, it's like hay that was fever like or something specific. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I have asthma, or you know, I'm uh, sensitive to mold or whatever. So based on that data, we um, we launched this thing in their menu co called "Find Relief From" and then list of all these things that they might want to find relief from. Right, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so that that was uh, that was a thing that came from the data, and then in Google Analytics we measured people who use this feature. So this choose, let's say, dust mites or whatever. And then in Google Analytics, we set up uh, an advanced segment of people who use this feature, find relief from, mm -hmm. and we compared the conversion rate against people who are not using that feature. And the, the difference was like four times. Wow. So it was like something like three versus 12%. It's like, wow. It's huge, uh, yeah. So that is an insight. Of course, cause and correlation, we don't know really, but we, our hypothesis was that it is the use of this feature. So now the question is, how can we get more people to use that feature? Right. And with the assumption that if they use it, they'll buy it more. So what we did for uh, first, we, we made it orange. The thing on the menu, we made it orange so it would stand out. Mm -hmm. Actually, results went down. Wow. Because it turned out, and when we looked at the data, it did not get more people to use the feature at all. And even... And for those people who did not use the feature, the conversion just went down. So that orange thing was a hmm. distraction. Hmm. People looked at it, so they stopped looking at other stuff, right? So, so drawing uh, attention to it through color was the wrong way to go. Mm -hmm. But we were still confident in our hypothesis. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, well, how else can we get more people to use this feature? Mm -hmm. So we ran an A-B test, actually multiple where on the home page of the site we got rid of all the products and had a massive big list of um and if people want to see just to mention if people want to see what we're talking about they can go to market tech scroll down and there's a box um where you can that says our conversion optimized design portfolio you can kind of click through and look yeah. at look at these but go on so yeah, that design portfolio is only for redesigns, but actually most of our business is not um, doing redesigns, mm. but uh, taking an existing site and improving it item by item, right. like through testing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's how you go. You, you implement, you measure, you look at the data, you see if yeah. that data offers an insight because data doesn't tell you anything, right? Right, yeah. Data is like, I mean, uh, and you know, when it comes to data, it's also like, what is the data that you look at? Because if we're crossing the road, you know, we could look at the, the shapes of the leaves on the trees or the eye color of the people around us, that's data. Yeah, yeah. But the only data that matters is that, is there a car coming or not? If we want to cross the road alive. Right. All right, uh, so the same thing with, with your web analytics data. It's like you have data about a whole bunch of stuff. You need to look at the right data and then the interpretation, that, that's a skill that you need to tell, develop. So what did you do for that site to draw attention to it without the color? So we, we just made it on the home page center a prominent and mm -hmm. there's a test still going on it uh, mm -hmm. we, we've already there's always a test still going on things I'm sure for you right? there, there always is a test going yeah it seems like qualitative is huge you figure out a lot of big breakthroughs with qualitative what's another big one you discovered from just talking to the employees or website owner or customers mm. or for yourself so for, for, for a company that um, is, is known for document management and paper shredding. Uh, so I, I was talking to their salespeople and ask, and this is my, my goal here is to find out some data to make their landing pages better. Mm -hmm. And the salespeople tell me, I asked the salespeople, what is the number one question people ask when they call in? Uh, you know, they, they get to the landing page, they pick up the phone, mm -hmm. and they tell me, where do you keep the stuff? And the, the, the landing page had no mention of where is the, if, 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 the, if you hold my 
uh, like the documents, the papers, you know, if a, if a story that your facility, where is the facility? I would never think to even ask you that. Would never. You would never think that that's a question that, that matters. But because the, and the underlying intention uh, there was that people wanted to know that if I need to access those papers, how fast can I get to them? You mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. so like you can you can find awesome, awesome insights everywhere. Yeah. So I love that. Um, so, Pep, what are some conversion changes that didn't work? Like you were saying, you put that orange button. What was one that your hypothesis said this is mm. definitely going to work and it just it bombed? Um, so another client, uh, diamondcandles.com. They sell yeah. scent I've talked candles. To, it's Justin, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Justin I've talked to Justin before. Yeah. Perfect. Well, uh, he's my client. I'm his service provider. So... Uh, he's selling scent, scented candles with a ring in it. It's a great idea. I love it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a code for a ring. It's not an actual ring anymore. Um, so it's a scented candle, and you can't smell it online. And the only place you can buy it is online. So how do you increase the motivation to buy the product? And I thought, well, copy. Why don't we write... A better copy for the products like you come into the room and the fresh scent of freshly grated oranges fills the <laughs> room and you know you flow through the you know whatever right just instead of just saying orange smelling candle you know just make it make it uh, better and that bombed yeah so i was i was uh did not see that come i was so convinced i mean i see it of course uh every week i have a bunch of tests where I'm like, what the uh, hell is going on here? You know, so I, you know, I've been doing this for years. Yeah, <laughs> run thousands and thousands of tests, and my guess or as to what's going to win mm -hmm. gets it right maybe sixty percent of the time, maybe seventy percent. Wow. Just slightly better flipping a coin and not good enough. Um, and so. I laugh whenever I see people, especially if you go to conferences uh, and when they deal with this live uh, website teardowns or critiques mm -hmm. and they just claim that do this, this works. Of course, with page fights, that's where, you know, paid to do as well, not paid, but um, but it's, it's fun. I yeah, mean, never, never check believe that anybody. Out. Yeah, you have to test it. So what else? Um, so what'd you do then? The orange, the copy didn't work. What? Uh... Oh, actually, yeah. So what did work was bigger pictures. So bigger pictures re re increased the revenue uh, around seven percent or so, huh. uh, which was a great win. So right now, if you go to diamondcandles.com, all product images are massive. Yeah, yeah. So what else that you predicted that didn't that you were convinced and it did not work? Hmm. Mm. Okay, so I could do this for the next few hours test. with you. Just <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, a test in nationality, uh, mm -hmm. where um, you go to the cart page. Mm -hmm. You know, basically, if you add a product to the cart, you end up on a cart page, an e-commerce site, mm -hmm. and it has a, a whole bunch of logos in there. Um, like, you know, payment secured by this and this and we're recommended by this and money back guarantee and a whole bunch of anxiety relief right. messages. Yes, yes. And there's so many of them that I think it's like an overkill or I thought it's mm -hmm. an overkill because mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. there are like so much. They all re demand attention. They, yet the only thing we want them to click is proceed to checkout. Right. So we ran a test where... We is a A B C D test, or um, so like multiple variations. We just mm -hmm. removed different elements that I thought are just not needed, but no, they they're all needed. <laughs> I love those ones that you are convinced, and yeah. Then it just doesn't work. What's another one? Okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, oh, so uh, for conversion Excel uh, in. In the beginning of October, I ran this campaign called Conversion October, where it was like a month-long free email course about conversion optimization. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, I had a landing page for it, and I created three variations for it. And one of the variations 
had um, lots of uh, like well, I went above and beyond with proof. Like uh, all kinds of uh, remu reviews and testimonials, and like my bio and what I've done and accomplished and so on, and no, uh, nothing, no, uh, did did not move. And I, I thought that it's uh, you know adding more credibility to my offer. That here. also makes sense, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I didn't. Uh, and in hindsight, since I mainly promoted this campaign through my own channels like social media and mm -hmm. an email uh, list and of course I had a bunch of referral traffic as well but mainly my own sources so they already knew me well that's my own my explanation you never know why ultimately mm -hmm. but uh, so yeah I thought uh, my in conclusion was that the motivation was already high and the, the, the friction was already minimal so the, the, the landing page converted at around 65% uh, and uh, I had some other variations in there as well, but so what was the variation that did work? It wasn't... Actually, the, they they're all equal. Oh, they're I mean, equal. Uh, there was no difference. Oh wow! It's just like put put. I could just say fuck you. Download the book. <laughs> <laughs> That's See, a good that test hypothesis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I I like where um, at a Unbounce conference in Vancouver in uh, September. Yeah. There was a panel discussion. There was a guy, uh, I forgot his name, uh, Braden, I think, uh, and he said something funny where when he's testing stuff and nothing makes a difference, like, you know, A, B, S, C, D, they all convert at the same level. Mm -hmm. It's like, am I doing something wrong? I just And so he on purpose makes a shitty page so the conversions would go down so to be sure that something is actually happening. Right, right. You know? So might not be a bad idea. So all this... I mean, it's kind of a wasted traffic. So I, actually, yeah. I, that's not my official recommendation. Yeah, but yeah, it's funny. What about Pep? That you reluctantly did something. You you thought you saw something in the data, and you reluctantly did it. Didn't think it would really work, and it it really killed it. That's a good question. Because um, I'm sure there's the other side of the coin where yeah, this is going to work, and it does it, and yeah, things, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. This is probably uh, not going to work, but I'll do it anyways. Um, there have been many cases. Um, hmm. You know, I'm I'm gonna have to owe you the answer for this. Okay. One. All right. There's so many cases you can't even think of one. What I about mean, a, a latest uh, I one? I open up my Optimizer right now, and there, there are like 30, 40 tests running. Yeah. So, what uh, are some of the tests on there that uh, that are interesting? That are interesting. Yeah. So, okay. Um, <clears throat> so, for instance, for this nationality site, well, uh, data tells me that about a third of the traffic is landing directly on category pages. Hmm. So, they don't, so they just see, you know, the products on the category page. They don't know anything about the, the site, or most of them don't. Right. So the idea was that, hey, well, why don't we communicate three key reasons to trust this site or to buy from this site mm -hmm. on the category pages? So on top of the products, uh, we added their doctor recommended products, which is their kind of like their man, uh, value proposition, 60-day mm -hmm. money back guarantee to calm fears, and uh, that 1.2 million happy customers since 1988 as social proof. Mm -hmm. And so far, this uh, test is uh, killing it with a ten percent uplift in conversions and revenue. Wow, both. That's huge. Um, Pep, I know you uh, you have a bunch of stuff you need to get done. So I'll just wrap it up for you because we're right at the, the top of the hour. Even though I have uh, fifteen or seventeen more questions for you, I'm gonna keep <laughs> it to one. Um, what do you think would be the most important to leave people with? I mean, I wanted to see some of the best advice you've gotten from influential mem uh, mentors. Um, what's some of the best advice that you would have for, for people that we should leave them with? Don't trust anybody. Do your own research um, and test stuff. And of course, I understand if you don't have enough traffic, it's 
complicated. Uh, yeah. I have an article about it, what to do, but to follow follow data, not opinions. You know. What are some tools you use? You'd recommend people using to test stuff. To test stuff, yeah. I I prefer Optimizely myself. Mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's great. Uh, of course, you need to know some jQuery, CSS. Without that, leave it to the developer um, mm -hmm. to set up. Um, Google Analytics has a one built in, but that's only a split URL testing tool, mm -hmm. and that's free. Uh, actually, Optimizely is free if it's uh, you have less than fifty thousand visitors a month. Mm. So that also works. I I, I love Optimizely. I use it mm -hmm. almost exclusively. What about questions for the qualitative? Do you have a set of questions you go through? Yeah. Because um, I think it would be super valuable, actually. You know, uh, it's, um, I have, I've written a blog post on it called uh, mm -hmm. How to Identify Your Online Audience, where mm -hmm. I go into those questions. But typically yeah. I ask stuff like, what's the one thing that almost made you stop buying? Uh, what are the, some of the doubts and hesitations you had before buying? And this is a survey that goes out to people who just purchased something for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I use usually Typeform for a service because it's the most beautiful one, or Google Docs because it's free. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the, with the service, they want to figure out the friction you know, that they experienced in their mind, mm -hmm. um, as well as uh, their shopping process. Like, how did you choose to buy this item? Like, oh, I looked at the color and the fabric and so on. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So where should people go? Where should we send them? Where should they check out? ConversionExcel.com. Okay. Last question, Pep. As an entrepreneur, I want to hear what's been the lowest moment and what's been the proudest moment? Mm. The lowest moment was when I realized that I, I, I have to kill train them. Uh, I was demoralized. I was out of money. Uh, the realization that what I've been working on for the last two years has been mm -hmm. like a waste of time. It, it wasn't because I learned a lot, but it felt that like that right. at the moment. Um, so that was like the lowest yeah. point. How do you get out of that rut? Just, you need new wins, I think. So, yeah. uh, and with conversion Excel, I started winning pretty much right off the bat. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, so, what's been the proudest? proudest moment yeah I think once we once we reached a uh, hundred thousand monthly readers with conversion Excel or um, so I was like amen yeah. solid that's solid I was very happy about that yeah and now onwards to one million a month one million a month nice that's my goal love it Pep it's been fantastic thank you so much um, I'm gonna I'm going to have to cue in the, the metal rap at some point. So thank <laughs> you. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you. Well, that's why the rap career didn't work out, actually. But it found something easier, conversion optimization.